hate puppies. It's a good podcast. I feel stronger. Right. See, I'm changing it. Yeah. See how I did that? I like how you updated that. That yeah. was smooth, too. Yeah, I'm feeling stronger. You spent a lot of time editing that, I can I tell. I did. Yeah. I did. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House, the only podcast dedicated to solving first world problems and hopefully helping you figure out what beer you should be drinking this weekend. It's a big weekend for some of us. We got President's Day. Hurrah. Yes. Kind of excited about that. Yep, and then last minute, the local schools decided to close Tuesday, too. Yeah! Yeah! Which is great, because I'm out of town for work. F school, me too. Yeah, so super. Yeah, it just works out great. Less than two weeks notice, that's what you need, you know? I like to throw wrenches and shit, you know? Yeah, it's... Keep that shit moving. Pretty dope. It's very nice. (laughs) But, I can't complain. Can't complain. You know why? Why? Because I'm fucking rich. Well... You, you've always spent money like you're rich, so... Uh, Where's my... There it is. turn it up. I well, can't, I can't hear it. Because this is... Oh. I forgot. I'm already... You can't do two things at once, <laughs> Troy. <laughs> Got Dude, ahead of yourself. I am filthy, filthy rich. Nice. Do we ever just figure... Did you figure out... I know we haven't talked. Did you figure out who gave us the, the five-star review last week? I don't, don't even rich? know. Me either. I don't even know. It's awesome, though, guys. Keep... Keep them coming, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, mean, I like that guy. Mm-hmm. Nah, He's dude, cool in our books. My Super Bowl bets hit like mad. I don't know if you're playing me or you are actually now uh, locked and loaded. I returned at least $2.70 on every dollar I bet on the Super Bowl. Okay. Now, think about that. If you just bet on the spread... Yeah. You're going to get like 95 cents back yeah. on every dollar. I was hitting everything. How many did you, what are they, parlays or what'd you do? Stupid bullshit, man. Like, obviously, I had the Chiefs, which was great. And did that you was. Get Tails on the coin flip? Dude, I couldn't figure out how to bet Tails on the coin flip. I said on the podcast, betting Tails. Yeah. Eddie V got rich. I got rich. How'd you do? Uh, Let's see. The only gambling, you know, I'm not a gambler. Yes, yes. Uh, we go to our neighbor's house, uh, listeners, Becca. Um, it's two families, so there's eight of us, and we each have a dog. So there's ten people there. We and threw two in, dogs. Yeah, we threw well eight people and two dogs. Okay, so, ten. So we did we did a we did blocks, and we did each family threw in twenty five bucks. So we did ten, 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 and twenty. And did you hit any of that action? My family hit got forty dollars so for, we put in 25 and got 40 boom so we came out 15 dollars ahead that's good i won one the dog won one and my youngest son won the 20 dollar end of the game all right so you know who you're bringing back next year <laughs> those your, two <laughs> your wife and the eldest can stay home that's right because they're just dead weight then you know i like we threw in the money and then you know the the boys are like you know uh negotiating like okay dad so if i win you know i'll give you the five dollars that you put in for me oh what a saying <laughs> quite literally the least they yeah, can do literally because anything less than that exactly. is yeah. disrespectful but yeah, even that exactly. is mm, still yeah. a little disrespectful but i get it yep i get it yeah no i was good i, I put a big bet on the chiefs in fact I put all the money in my account on the Chiefs. Yeah. And then I put back in twice as much money in my account as I'd already put on the Chiefs. Nice. And then I doubled the bet that I had on the Chiefs the day of. Nice. Because I had a nice. panic bet. And then I started placing like little bets here and there. Like like 10 bucks on the KC defense to score a touchdown. Holy Boom! cow. Yeah. That shit hits. So like 10 turns to 50 quick. Yeah. yeah. I was like. Not bad. Yeah, and no one had that. Everybody had the Eagles D was gonna like. Yeah, but in my mind, in my mind, KC can't win this game. We're gonna need some luck. Yeah. And I'd been betting on defenses all through the playoffs, so I was owed because no one was hitting those (laughs) bets. And I kept losing, losing, losing. And I was like, I'm gonna ride it, ride it till the end. Oh, the other dad there, he he's a big gambler. And he had fifty dollars on the coin toss with a friend of his. He hit that. It was Boom. a double or nothing bet. The guy was down fifty. The guy calls him up. He's like, oh. fifty. He's like double or nothing on the coin flip. He's like, he won. He's like heads. He's like, all right, I'll take tails. 
bam. So he doubled that 50 to 100. From the jump. Then he had a bunch of squares going. And in one, he he had a $25 square. And he won, I think it was second quarter, he won uh, nice. 400 bucks. Oh, man. So he I was up. excited for him. I love that. Yeah. Had Travis Kelsey score a touchdown. Boom. Nice. That happened, like, right away. I yeah. was like, that was a lock. I think I had yeah, Mahomes. Kelsey scoring a touchdown. I mean, had Mahomes to hit the over on throwing touchdowns, hit that. Like it was, like everything I so touched. No, you didn't do any like three or four parlays where like you bet a couple bucks and win a lot. I did have one of those, and the Eagles player shit the bed. Uh everything else hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they were all it's in always my bed. one. Yeah, it's always the one. Always one. It was. It was unfortunate. What'd you think of the whole Super Bowl? Like. Game, halftime. How can you not like that? I mean, the over-under was at 50, and Madden said Eagles and under. Yeah. It was way over. Way over. Yeah, they almost hit the the over at the half. Yeah, so Madden Madden totally choked. So next year, when I'm talking about 65% of the time, because I'm going to have to come down from 70, Yeah, just remember, the last three Super Bowls, Madden has actually shit the bed. Since their AI got smarter, Yeah, it's gotten dumber. Yeah. I, you know, I honestly don't. I enjoy hanging out with my friends. I enjoy eating because we eat a lot. But the game, I know it was back and forth, but like, I guess I think I really don't like either team. So I wasn't really pulling for them. And for either of them, and the com- I th- commercials used to be awesome. They're pretty much lame now. Like, yeah. So I was, I found myself running back and forth. So I was missing commercials because mm-hmm. I was watching the game out here. And then I was running inside to check on the fam. Yeah. Like, cause like the, the Duke came over with his family. So nice. the girls were inside and yeah. he refused to go inside. He was hilarious. He <laughs> sat his ass right here and watched the game. And I kept feeling like I need to go make sure that everyone has food, everything. So I can, yeah. I missed. There's almost, no infighting with all the, all the females. <laughs> yeah. So I basically missed all the commercials. So I didn't get to see that. I thought Rihanna you did a anything. good job. I mean, look, Stapleton was dope. It was good. The halftime show was good. It was visually cool. The fact that she was up there like a hundred and some feet is pretty damn impressive because that platform was not stable. No. But like the 500 dancers, that was like just ridiculous. I, I didn't, I didn't really get it. Yeah. I, She's I, got I, a lot of hits though. And there, a lot of them are good. So, I mean, she rolled through that. I mean. And everybody's like, oh, she's lip syncing. I'm like, well, first off, of course. Clearly she's lip syncing. Second off, even if she was singing, if you've ever been to a live game anywhere, there's a delay. So you can't go off of watching their their mouth move in the voice. There's always a delay That's true. in, the, in, the, in That's those true. live settings. By the time you're singing into the mic and it's getting through everything. But it was pretty obvious. Like there were some times there were like, how could the you mic away be? and you're hearing it. Yeah. Like, Ella, Ella. And you're like, oh, come on. Well, I mean, first off, all of these, almost, not, let me not say all, almost all of these singers now, they're produced to the, to the hilt. They all have backing tracks and backing singers. So, even when they're not on the mic, they're probably their voice is backing their own voice. You know, like it's just how music's made. I don't know why this in the nineteen. It didn't offend me. Like, it didn't yeah. offend me. I thought it was a nice touch for her to get knocked up for it. She, uh, that's commitment. That was that's commitment. Yeah. She was like, the costume's too big. I got it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I got you covered. That's right. That was the talk of the town. Like in our like, the women and everybody's like, I think she's pregnant. I think she's pregnant. I'm like. Obviously, but you yeah, you know. it's not a ham sandwich. No, that's a pregnant. Yeah, she's not backed up a couple of days. Oh, that would have been <laughs> and she finally lets go. She's like, you know, seven hundred fifty feet in the air. Oh, she God. finally lets go. That's why she had that tight suit on. Yeah, it's coming the off emergency. The, it's coming off the glass thing and just falling down onto the. That's why everyone was slipping everywhere. Yeah, she just slip sliding around. That would have been, and all those white suits down oh, below, God. all the little Stay Puff Marshmallow <laughs> men would have been covered in dookie. Oh, that would have been a, that would have been a uh, moment to remember for sure. Oh yeah, it, I do like, and I know I know a lot of people didn't like the ending. I love seeing smart plays like that. Like I enjoy those plays. Yeah, it was well done. Like that guy could have w- waltzed into the end zone, have have a have on his lifetime record. I scored a touchdown. In the Super Bowl. Yeah, but now he's got the smartest play of the yep. of the year. <laughs> well done. Yeah, I'm I'm all for it. I thought it was I thought it was was 
pretty damn good. Yeah. Pretty damn good. I mean, that's you can't ask for more than that. We've seen Super Bowls where it's like, you know, 13 to 10 kind of stuff, and you're like, well, defensive battle, and then you got to pretend you liked it. Never like that. No. You want to see 70 points on the board with the game hanging in the balance. That's what I'm talking about. I was listening to a sports podcast earlier in the week, and they were talking about a how, different one, not us. Not us. After us. Um, they were talking about how sports is really taking a hit with everybody cutting the cord because everybody got this TV revenue. Well, they're going to start going to a la carte. Like, you want to watch a game, you can pay for it. Yeah. And they're talking about the Super Bowl being part of that. Like, it might be like a pay-per-view, like $100. Because think of all the mo- Like, people will watch that. People will pay to see that. So when I get to pay a hundred dollars and I don't have commercials, but if I pay if I pay fifty, then I have to deal with the commercials. I mean, I don't know if it's commercialless or not. I mean, something. I mean, there's going to be tears. There's always if, tears. Four K. Yeah, def, exactly. High def. Well, if you think about it now, your streaming services have commercials. I mean, there's our versions you can pay for non-commercials, but there's a entry level where like everything I watch on Hulu has commercials. You know. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do out here where we have all the TVs and, and all the stuff. And it's all streaming, yeah. Now it's going to YouTube TV, and I was looking into that, and then I saw that you can only stream three at a time devices on the same account. So I'm like, well, that's not good. Because we usually stream four. Five, well, I, thought, I thought we had one on, li- on the local, which was over the air, right? Oh, that's correct. Yeah, one's antenna. And then, but then there's still four TVs, yeah. you know, watching stuff. So now it's like. And even if I reduced it to three, then no one can watch TV inside. Good luck. Yeah. Like, that's going to be a, a, a problem. We'll so, have Red Zone or whatever. They got rid of Red Zone, right? Well, so I just found the loophole. You can pay an extra $20 a month, and then you get 4K, and 4K will give you unlimited streams. There's only like six 4K channels. So you're paying $20 a month to see six channels yeah. in 4K. So I had a buddy going off on 4K the other day about how great it was, and I was like, you know... Since they made TVs nice, I don't find anything egregious anymore. Like, everything looks awesome to me. We'll put a low-def signal onto a big-screen TV, and you'll be like, whoa, that's bad. Yeah, but, like, I get over-the-air stuff that looks great. Yeah, because it's HD, Yeah, which is built for the big TV, so it's perfectly fine. But 4K is just better. Well, of course, and I know you're going to buy into better. Oh, I mean, I am, but I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. I'm literally going to have to buy it just so we can have enough TVs out here. It's a, It's a... It's bullshit. It's a first world problem. It's clearly a first world problem. So I just found everyone the loophole. If you're going to stream a bunch of games, but so you're saying the loophole is pay more. Yeah, Funny it's America. how that works. America. Well, yeah. yeah. Throw money at the problem, and that's it's already YouTube TV is already sixty four ninety nine. Then they then I got to add twenty dollars on top of that, so now it's eighty five bucks, and then I got to pay for the package. Lord knows what that's going to yeah. cost. So. So we need to up What the, happened to cutting the cord? Like, I thought I was supposed to save yeah, money no. by saying, I just want to watch that. Nope. They got smart quick with that cut the cord bullshit. Like, yeah. they figured that out quick. Real fast. Real it's quick. No longer a deal. No. So I'm just going to transfer, you know, from one evil to another. I mean, I've, I'll say it. I've said it. Like, I miss my cable package. I paid a fortune for it. But I, miss, I love DVRing stuff and fast forwarding through the commercials. Like... It makes a big difference to me at the end of the night when I sit down to watch a 21-minute show versus a 35-minute show because they've actually fit more commercials in now. Like, then, you know, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, now that I'm I'm watching things on stream or, yep. like, on demand where they can put the commercials yep. back in versus just DVR, yep. you're right. It's, it's more than your normal three breaks at I was know, able to two watch or three minutes. Three shows in an hour. Yep. And now I'm back to the two. Maybe. If, and, and that's usually more than, a, than yeah. an hour. So it, it, it sucks because I, I, was, I was really getting accustomed to three episodes yeah, yeah. a night and only burning an hour of my life. Yep. And then going to bed. Mm-hmm. Now I'm still watching my three. Yeah. But it's an hour and a half. Yep. Now I'm tired. I'm really tired. Mm-hmm. Speaking of throwing money at things, I haven't talked to you about this. I had to throw some money at the new car today. At your Jeep? Yeah, man. Threw a... Uh, Got some ducks. Through a uh, what? <laughs> Got some ducks. Ducks? What? Yeah, you know, like to put in the. On the oh ground. yeah, <laughs> I uh, it threw a uh, check engine light at me uh, oh, the other day, and I was like, "Here we go." But you know, I bought a high mileage car, so I was kind of not surprised by it. And usually, I've only had crappy cars that have 
a lot of miles, so I'm not really worried about yeah. a check engine light. But I was like, don't know what this, and I don't have the gizmo to like so check it or anything. I do. So okay. if you ever, well, I, I come understand, on by, I understand I'll run why the they're cool, but like I'm not going to be able to fix it, right? So I took it. No, so, but they usually will charge you like $150. No, uh, most shops will say, we'll put that towards your work. Oh, they'll credit you if I diagnose it? No, they won't, gonna no they won't yeah, credit you. I'm exactly. Saying some shops will be like, hey, as long as you get the work done here, yeah. we'll put that 150 towards the work. Yeah. But if you don't for some reason... Like it turns out, it was just you had a yeah. low air in your tire. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you fucked. So I called, I called the dealership because I was like, I guess I'll take it to the dealership. It's not a warranty or anything, but I was like, it's been, yeah. it, it has a history there. I'll keep it going there. The previous owner had taken it there, so I called, and this was yesterday on the fifteenth, February, and I was like, yeah, you know, got to check engine light, you know, blah blah blah, and wanted to bring it in, get looked at, it, and the lady's like, I mean, they were nice. She's like. Okay, yeah, our earliest uh, date is uh, March 15th. Fuck you. I was like, a month, huh? I was like, I guess uh, you will not be servicing my vehicle. No. Called the guys I've been going to all the time, which I will give them a plug. I've been taking my work vehicle and both my personal vehicles, wife's car and my car there for a long time. They've always done right by me, Allen Tire, and called them yesterday. They're like, yeah, man. I said, can you look at this? And they were like, because I didn't know. I don't know. Like, I take old beaters there, and they, yeah. they're, I always look at them more of like an oil change, kind of, you know, not sure. like a, so I was like, can y'all do this? He's like, yeah, definitely. We can check it out. Fuck. AutoZone can do it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, took it there. I called them yesterday. They're like, bring it in tomorrow morning. Had it fixed by this afternoon. Done. But I did have to throw a few hundred bucks at it. Ended up being an electrical issue that, of course, took longer to chase down than uh that's always it than uh parts and stuff but i was happy they said good news and bad news the good news is it's nothing major like you weren't you know i didn't do any damage or you know nothing bad so yeah. like a little peace of mind there for you know coming out of pocket a few hundred bucks but it was still uh, sucks it still sucks still a hit you know so if we're giving if we're giving shout outs to uh auto places I, doing, your buddy i thought about your buddy give a shout out to auto rescue over yeah. here in Midlothian, they're uh, pretty solid. Yeah, stand up. Place. I haven't been there yet. I've been. I've I been, like uh, them a lot. Like them a lot, and they even won my wife's business. Oh, which nice! Is damn near impossible. Like she went in there, she had some stuff done because they uh -huh. do, they do like the like the dirt cheap oil change to like get you in the door. Yeah, yeah. And then be like, you know, while you're here, here's the other things if you want us to work on that. And she was like, Yeah, I'm aware of all that. No, I'm here for the half price oil change. And they didn't hard sell her. Oh, they hard sell her. They yeah. said, they said, so you're, you're going over to that other place. They're like, and you already have a quote and you have an appointment. And they said, let us see the quote. Oh, nice. Beat the quote. Wow. And they said, bring the car in. And then when she showed up, they were like, they were like, all right, so this is going to take all day. Here's your BMW. Wow. Now she's like, you know, who's great. Auto yeah. rescue. <laughs> <laughs> Upgrade my uh, Dodge to a Beamer. Yeah. yeah. No. So I was like, I was like, well played. Cause I told him, I said, you're never going to get her. And I was like, and I'm not going to force her. I'm not going to force it. Like, yeah. like she's happy where she goes. I was like, I'm your guy. I'll be here all the time. Yeah. They were like, give us a shot. And I was like, I'm going to bring her in for that half price oil change. See what you can do. And she said, uh, but see, I'm always hesitant and I know they got to do it, but I'm always hesitant about to get you in on this and then find, you know, other things. No, she knew she had other things. Yeah, yeah. And the place that she trusts had given her a list of here's all the things wrong. There's matched. Yeah. Like it wasn't like they were trying to, you know, they were like, your brakes literally don't work. She's well, like, I'm that's, fully aware. That's what I've always appreciated about my guys is like, they're like, you could do this. It doesn't have to be done right now. But, you know, it will need to be done in it the future. It was the exact same exactly. thing. They were like, you don't and worry about this. that's all I asked for, some honesty. Yeah. And she was But the throwing. loaner car is dope. Yeah, it was nice. Y'all need... Was, well, she needs that. You have 18 cars, but she can't drive. <laughs> yeah, I was like... I, I wasn't even thinking... And they didn't give me a loaner car because they know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, like, when I go in there, they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll get it taken care of. So, I, I went up there so I could give her a ride home. And they were like, oh, don't worry about her. She's driving a 5 Series now. Nice. I was like, you son of a bitch. It's like, well played, sir. Well played. I wonder how that works. Like, can they do that for anybody or just like trusted people? Because you know people rag the shit out of some of those cars. I mean, it wasn't wasn't a high end. I mean, it was high end, but it's an older yeah, yeah, yeah. BMW. Like yeah. there was nothing special about it. But when you need a car, oh well, I mean it's the best. When you have to have your car worked on, most people 
we have first world problems. We have multiple vehicles. Yeah. So we get to skate by, but like most people don't have that. And it's like a huge inconvenience. Yeah. No. And auto rescue, the beauty of them right now, they're just getting their feet under them. So you can get work done quick. Yeah. Cause they're like, we'll take you right now. Yeah. And I'm like, yes. That's awesome. So yeah, that, give them that, a shout. That won't be the case later. Yeah. Well, so, it might be. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Right now is the no, I'm just saying they'll get more and more busy as they build more of a client yeah. base. But right now is that golden time, you know, where you can go in and be like, hey, mm-hmm. change all that shit. Yeah, like, get in early. You want to get in early somewhere. Absolutely. If you can. They're I mean, like they're like, go ahead, sit in the back, have a cure rig, knock yourself I out. I mean, we're lucky because where we live, like there are multiple places in the area, so we can kind of shop around. Yeah. Course. And we can like part of the reason I love where I go is I can walk home. It's a 15 minute walk. So like if I have to, if, if my wife's not yeah. able to give me a ride, like I can just walk up there, grab my car, drop it off or whatever. Convenience is yeah. king, but now I got a new spot. I'm loyal to now you got a, well, you don't need to walk. If you get a loaner car, I got electric skateboard. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I like the electric skateboard. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a nice, that's a nice thing to have. Yeah. Like, you gotta get a tote. You get, just gotta get a, one of those uh, tow packages up there from the Miata. You can you can drive it up somewhere and then drive the Miata home like a dinghy on a boat. <laughs> you actually could. I mean, Miata is a dinghy, yeah. essentially. Tow, tow the Miata up there with the Forerunner next time you need you know, to work I've on it. You know, I've got a little tow package on there. <laughs> it's probably just enough to tow a Miata. Yeah. Well, yeah, the truck could do it. But I'm saying you need that one on the front of the Miata that, like, you see that RV is oh, pulling. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. There's a whole other part of the problem. Yeah. You know, you got to be able to tow the car. Or you can get a. Yeah, that's t- what a, I need. A tow, uh, car tow thing, the little two wheel thing you put the front wheels up on. That's what I need in my, in my yard. Another one. Yeah, yeah. Something else. Just more shit. That's right. I'll take it. Yeah. Dude, speaking of first world problems, do you hear about what AMC, the movie theaters, are doing? Yes. Yeah. I got thoughts. I do have thoughts. Yeah. So for everyone out there, if you're not familiar with this, you know, the movie industry on the whole has taken huge hit. Huge. I mean, huge. There's literally been two movies in the last four years that anyone has gone and seen. It's Maverick. I can name one. Yeah. Maverick. Because <laughs> I saw that one. Yeah. Everyone went and saw Maverick. Avatar, I guess. And then the one. other yeah. the other people went and saw Avatar. Outside of that, don't lie. You haven't been to a movie. And if yeah. you have, you're a dork. Yeah. So, or you're just like movies, you're a hardcore movie. Yeah, movies are your thing. Or you're addicted to butter. <laughs> they do have great popcorn, dude. I, I mean, when I went and saw Avatar, I was like, I got, I got the big jug. Oh, always, I gave it to the kids, and then I got a big jug, and I put it in my fucking lap. That's right. And I got myself a, a sprite because there's just yes. something about oh yeah, soda and popcorn, and popcorn. That's salt with the sweet. That is heaven yeah like even though they had beer there no i was like <sighs> not as good beer is not what i need right Big now old icy sprite yeah it, it's, like a, it's a coke or a too. sprite those are the two and, and it's like that's that is my big debate because yep. the popcorn's coming home with me exactly now it's do i want sprite or coke and it depends really yeah. that comes down to the hour of the day but the, it is expensive yeah but that's part of the equation like yeah I know I'm going there. I'm getting that giant ass thing of popcorn. I'm gonna walk out feeling sick. Yes, can't wait. There's certain movies you have to see in a theater, you know, or there used to be. It's yeah. still not the same when you're 65 inch. Like it's just not the same. But we're getting to the point now where 65 inch is kind of like almost damn near the entry level. Now in my house it's 55. Yeah, we I need, think I, I have need a to... 55 or a 60. But it's like now if you went out and bought a TV. Yeah. 65 is literally where you're going to start. Yeah. For the most part. Like it's because they're getting so stupid. Cheap. Oh, yeah. My my father-in-law has an 80 inch. Well, that's the, I didn't even real like I walked into Costco the other day and all of a sudden I was looking at the 65 inch TVs and I was like, ew. Yeah. And that's 10 <laughs> inches bigger than my TV, yeah. which should, would, would be a massive upgrade. Now here we got we got what? 42 inch TVs, mm-hmm. 50 inch TVs. I mean, it ain't like it's. Yeah, but we got five of them. Those, Boom. Yeah. But those 80-inch TVs, yeah. 85, now I'm like, now that's a television. Yeah. That is beautiful. And that's, now all of a sudden, we're going to have to start having 4K. Yeah. Because I'll bet you HD in that, you're like, huh. Might be a little grainy. Do I see pixels? Yeah. Well, that's unacceptable. Can't Not in our first world. No. no. That's, that's second world Can't deal eligible. with this. <laughs> yeah, I can't deal with this yeah. bullshit. So it is going to get more and more difficult to entice people to come out. And so AMC, in response to this, 
is deciding that they are going to charge differently for where you sit. So dead center of the theater, you're actually going to charge a premium. Best seat in the house. Yeah, they're going to charge a premium for that seat. For some people, best seat in the house. Yeah, then there, then there's the people whose necks are stuck yeah. with their head facing up, which is actually probably a problem nobody has anymore on account yeah. of phones. Everyone's necks are actually <laughs> starting to lilt forward. We can... Uh... You sit up front, you get a nice extension of the neck. Back to normal. Yeah, it's probably good. It's probably good for you. Yeah. You stretch it out for two hours. But so those seats are now at a discounted price. And then they said the seats that are like off in other areas. Is it going to work like a target, basically? Like dead center is the hot. And then as you get further out and, and closer, yeah. like, so is center center's still night more premium? Center middle would be more premium than... Outside, I mean, front, middle, or rear, uh, front or rear outside, right? Like, well, I guess if you're looking at it as a bullseye, and if the, in that scenario, yes, that that would be, but it's not a bullseye. It's more. But I wonder if like the whole horizontal. center row. Yeah. I wonder if the whole center row is a premium. I don't know. I haven't. I don't done, know either. Haven't done the research, but the the gist of it is that an average seat will be the normal price. Yeah. Anything that's better than average, will there be below? Per, yeah, Normal. so like the very front seat will be below. So basically, they're telling us. So will it all net to even then? If the place was packed. Yeah. But it won't be. Yeah, that's right. It won't be packed. More and people I, will buy the premium seats. I kind of liked the, how about I show up early? How are they going to police that? I guess they are, it's going to be difficult. Because if it's half empty and I buy the front row and I just jump back to the... So that's the gamble, right? Yeah. You get the 10 a.m. showing, you buy the front row seat, and then you wait till the movie starts, and then you... What are your thoughts on it? Uh, I think it's bullshit. I think they're oh, making... Oh, really? The, I think they're making the wrong move. Good. I, I'm glad you're taking this angle, because I, I wanted to argue how it makes sense. No, I think it's crap. Okay. Like, I think you're already in an industry that is it is folding. That's correct. The, you're like, it's going, it's trending down, so this isn't like... This is the move to do when it's on the upswing, right? Like when you're like packing out every theater. Yeah, you're, and you're not like, packed. Yeah, yeah. So like now it's like, and now you're going to force me to have to go sit, you know, four rows back further than I could and all the way on the edge just so I can pay a normal price. Yeah. So my family of four doesn't have to go above. Yeah. Like it's already too expensive yeah. anyway. You already quoted, you already yeah. just a moment ago said that it's already too expensive. Oh, I think, I mean, I think around here in the Richmond area, like if you go to a movie, it's probably like $15 a ticket. And you know, if you take a family of four, right, you're $60 out of the jump before then, you even buy stuff. Yeah. To eat. And you're going to, I mean, and really the food's more expensive than the ticket. If you, if literally four people are going to eat, you're going to spend on average more than $15 no, a person. No, I think it's super expensive to pop a kernel of corn. <laughs> I think that that's about right. Well, and everybody knows that soda out of the machine there is 10 times the price. It just is. It just, it, it's, they process it totally different. Like, yeah. it's just, it's not the same. And it's not even as good as McDonald's, which I can get for <laughs> pennies. Yeah. And that's they the best. They give you that away. They're like any size for 99 cents. No, so I think it's I think it's a cash grab at a time when and they the shouldn't theater, even be doing a cash the grab. The theater's always done the whole, uh, like, a small is $4 in a drink, and a, and a medium's like four twenty five, and a large is like four seventy five. you're like, well, I'm going to get the large now. Like, yeah, but I'm that's gonna, an, you, you have an undervalued. Those things are like, it's like six to seven to eight. Well, now. yeah, it's, like, it, it's expensive. Well, my, yeah, my point was, yeah, it's the, such a minuscule the, jump. It's such a minuscule jump. Like, so you're going to buy the bigger one, pay the extra, and you'll get more product. But, um, but I think it's, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of this. But here's my argument for why I don't really have an issue with it. It's kind of how seating everywhere works, right? At it, a, okay. Concerts. Yeah, true. You know, anything anything like Broadway shows. Like if you go see any live event, there are tiers of seats. There is. And you pay normal or or more. So I can kind of argue for it. No, I, I, but I, I, but I, I thought I, about that. I got that. And okay. I, was like, I was like, you know what? Everywhere else in society, you go to a ball game. Ball games, concert, yeah. Any sporting event, cheap seat. They call it the nosebleed, cheap seats for a reason, you know. Yep. And so, 
in that respect, you actually are going to be able to maybe entice some people to come back to the movies. I guess the big thing is like if a ticket, let's say for ease, a ticket is 15 bucks. Like, can I get a $10 ticket? Or are you talking like $14? Like, you know what I'm saying? I like, don't know. What's the, what, so what does the model look like on everything else they do? It's a dollar well, there, difference to, pe- to sense difference. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Well, I mean, in, in in our argument four, where we're talking concerts and sporting, it's hundred, you know, it's dozens of dollars. So you, you get me down to like five dollar tickets to sit in the back or the front. You did just open the door to teenagers. I ju- I thing. would take the cheap seats in the back, like if you really ju- if it was a big difference. And see, no, know, know why I'm on the other side of this fucking equation. There's a real basic reason. You're cheap. Yes. Now you see an advantage. Yes. Because you can save money. I'm the opposite of cheap, and now I feel like I'm getting hosed yes. because now I feel obligated to have the better seat. Well, look, I have a problem with my cheapness. It's not a. It's not something I appreciate myself. I don't like the fact that I spend too much money. Well, We're, there, it's the same problem. Yeah, it's just other sides of the coin. Here's my argument with the cheapness, and this is where this is where the the industry flight. Uh, Airplane industry, airline industry has fallen off. Everyone that everyone can afford to fly now, so you literally get bottom feeder assholes. Yeah, flying where it used to be, you were taking the bus. You know, you were taking the, you were driving, you were doing another form of transportation. You, only the you know elite flew, and you had some class and some dignity when you got on an airplane. Now it's like people show up in their sweats. And cut and want to fist fight the the poor yeah. uh, flight attendant, and that and to your argument about the teenagers, you get five dollar tickets, you're gonna get a group of ten teenagers sitting in the back throwing popcorn, you know, yelling at the screen the yeah, whole time, dicking off. Yeah. So, I don't know how this is gonna shake out, but I don't think it's the right move. But I hear what you're saying. Well, and I hear what you're saying. It's not the time. Now's not. It's the a time. weird time to do this. Yeah. If you were trying to do a premium experience, the only thing I can say that maybe it's the time is for two and a half years now, we've been picking our seats at theaters. Yeah, because I'm I'm doing, but I'm also going to those places that serve food. But e- like. but even I think even at uh, other ones, you pick your seats at a lot of them because they were doing distancing, so like they were putting spaces oh, in okay. between. I didn't realize it because I don't go. I literally have been going to the ones where I can eat. Yeah, yeah. Like have a beer. Well, I, that's a, the one I saw when I saw Maverick. It was in one of those. I don't know if I've been to a normal theater since then, but I'm pretty sure. I know for a fact that when social distancing was going on, it was like pick your seats, you know, because you, you had to yep. you had to police it, right? But I'm going back to the policing thing. How are you gonna you gonna have some some minimum wage uh, teenager coming through with a flashlight twice in a movie and like? Let me see your stub. Where you know? Are you supposed to be here? Or like you know? Like it just seems. And that's yeah. The movie Gestapo. Yeah, and they're gonna be interrupting. Like I don't. I can argue for or against it, but I do think it's a bad. T- I think the optics and the timing are bad. They got to put little sensors in the seat. Yeah. So if an ass yep. hits it, yep. it's like, burr, and then you're like, nah. They might. Uh, they might. Technology, dude. They might like have a way to like. Put it on your phone and tell if you're in the general area or like the ticket. Like I I went and ate at Torchy's the other day, which they're gonna open one down the street, but I was in the West End. They got the little buzzer things that restaurants have had forever. Sure. Uh, and maybe uh, I'm sure other places have this. I don't think I'd seen it. But they give you a little buzzer and you take it to your table and they got a spot on your table and it's geo located. So you sit the buzzer in the spot on the table, and then and someone just, come just to the brings buzzer. the food right to you. Like, they know what table you're at in there. I kind of like that. Pretty wild, right? Like, you didn't have to get back up and when they called your number and, like, go yeah, get it. Yeah, it didn't buzz, and then you get up. No. They just come over and go, your geolocator said, yep. this is your taco. They're like, ta-da. Like, I like that. Yeah. So maybe the maybe they give you a puck. Yeah, maybe. And then on the way out, you deposit your puck. Yeah. Ooh. Now, that would actually work. Yeah. And be like, yeah, he's in. If beach people mode. aren't stealing them, well, oh, <laughs> yeah, you're letting in people for five dollar tickets. Yeah, it always comes back to the to the kids that aren't you know being policed and uh, being watched. Like you know, they used to do three glasses, like drop them on your way out. Like you know, people are th- stealing those things. Yeah, and then what good are those? Yeah, and what? Well, th- why do kids do a lot of the things they do? They just do it to do it, you know? Oh, you see pictures of kids in the fifties. They all had the three D glass. That was actually yeah. cool. Yeah, but they worked outside. Well, no, they only worked with the blue and red, like, 
Yeah, no, it was stupid. Yeah. But it is kind of a teenage kids like to just have some swag. They like to see what they can get away with. They're pushing boundaries. They're learning. It's their job. It kind of is. I'm not mad at it. No. I can be disgusted. Well, the problem can't is be mad. the problem is not with the kids pushing the boundaries. The pa- problem with today's world is the parents not holding those boundaries, you know? That's a whole other conversation. Yeah, we're not going down and there. you're absolutely right. <laughs> There's a lot to do with lack, a of, lot to lack of giving a crap at yeah. the, at the yeah. upper echelon of the hierarchy in the home. Yep. I will give you that. That's what it all kind of stems. That's the hub in the wheel of a uh, shit show with children. <laughs> that's how it starts. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see if AMC can pull themselves out of the death spiral because... It's it's not looking good. Regal Cinemas is closing a bunch of their yeah. places. Like everything's shutting down. That whole industry's folding. But then you see a movie like Avatar come out and actually break records. So it's like people are. Coming. I like going to movies, but my problem is now I have all these streaming services that have new movies all the time, and there's always something I haven't seen right in my living room. Well, so that was the pushback with Maverick. So Maverick was ready to come out. Yeah. When when the pandemic started, Tom like, Cruise said hell to the no yeah he said fuck no which i kind of respect him like you don't have to respect the dude for his beliefs and all that i get it he's a nut job yeah but he is he is a good actor and if you're gonna argue well, against he, that he then you've lost movies. your mind he and he movies. understands the industry and he said no there will be a time and a place and we pull this thing back yep. we're not releasing it we're not going straight to streaming like everyone else did yeah because this movie is good enough to be seen. It has to be seen. In the theater. It has to be seen. I mean, I saw it there. If you don't see it there, you're missing out. It was the first thing that made me go back. For sure. For, for sure. It was like, I was and like, and you know oh. what he did that was dope? Flew that jet. Well, obviously. But like the fucking little, the little 30 second blurb at the beginning of the movie he did was pretty awesome. Where he's just totally he, forgotten the 30 second blurb. He just, it's him sitting there before the movie and he's like, I want to thank you guys for coming out to the movies. You know, this movie means a lot to me. It's meant to be seen in a theater and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just him looking in the camera and talking. You're like, I get you, Tom Cruise. Yeah. You get him for everything. But I get you, Pete Mitchell. Except for his, uh, you know, religious stuff. I mean, look. Unless you're a Scientologist and then you're like, boy, that guy gets it. Can you imagine being that rich and famous? Like, with just yes people around all the time. Yeah, you got to get those Thetans out, man. <laughs> you can't have that shit carrying you That's how my great-great-grandfather went. Yeah, man. Didn't you get gotta, the Thetans out. Yeah, be very careful with yeah. that stuff, man. You pay enough money in, you can get all them things out. Science. Tology. <laughs> 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 That's how that yeah. works. Well, we got a deli we that do was actually deli. recommended by a listener. Cups. Yeah, oh, I got I got Super Bowl cups, I got blue cups, I got little cups. Dude, yeah. check this thing out. So this is actually uh Oh our, no. Our, I see a word on here I do not like. Our buddy our buddy Brian Woody sent this our way, man, and I I'm I'm excited. He he reached out this week and he was like this is the one you got to try. Don't like that. You don't like the brewery itself. Do we like I mean, we do not like most of the brewery, most of the beer from this brewery. I find that Hardywood does a good job on a lot of things. Now, this beer, they must be pushing because they're selling it in 19-ounce cans, six-packs, and you're finding it in all kinds of stores. So in Virginia, you're going to be able to find this every. What, what is this called? The sheep? This is the Sheep Mullet Juicy D-I-P-A, 19-ounce can. It's a real cool can. It's like the size of a monster can, but taller so it's like tall and thin um it's nine point nine percent abv can you see all the wild colors on this thing i mean it, it looks is, like it's camo to me no it is yellow red orange green got a got a uh so camo got a um sheep wearing those uh cool uh what are those pit viper, pit glasses, viper glasses yeah with, he's got uh, a badass mullet i mean this yeah, is rad with, with uh Fruit reflecting in the uh, glasses there. This is a, this is a badass uh, can. It does look cool. So I'm I'm pretty excited about this. Let's see now, what the beer looks like. Now he he was like he reached out and was like this is awesome and sent a picture of it. Boy, that's all you're taking. Okay, I'm gonna get a. <laughs> boy. 
Well, I'm not drinking it. I understand, but and I can't waste it. But yeah, you can. I'm just gonna pour a little in there, just shits and giggles. Whatever you oh, do with that's it, that's enough. I understand, but I do have still a shit ton of a nine percent <laughs> beer. So there's the sheep mullet juicy dipper. This is a double IPA from Hardywood coming in at nine percent. Label coming in at fifty percent. Oh, that ABV. Lady, yeah, that that thing is thing is fire. Does it have anything written on it? Can does it have like a any any verbiage on there that describes nope. it at all? Because not at all. Yeah, why I would res- you do that? Which I respect. Let's let people make their own decisions. Why you got to? You know why do they always have to tell us? It's crushable. My thing is, I appreciate when they tell us, but most of the times they don't really give us like it's just. It's just word diarrhea, you know, adjective, blah. Like, it doesn't really say a lot. It says a lot, but it doesn't tell you much. Troy, I've had one sip. You hate this beer. Oh, it's going to be hoppy. It's a double IPA, right? It ain't even that. Uh Uh-oh. It's got coconut in it. Oh, you don't like coconut. Yeah. There's no coconut. It's pineapple on the... It's uh, pineapple-y. I like pineapple. Oh, you're going to love this then. I mean, that's damn near like a breakfast cereal. There's been all these, like, fake-ass breakfast cereal beers where they try real hard. This son of a bitch is orange, pineapple. That is... It's very fruity. That is, like, fruit forward. Yes, very fruit forward. I would not know that was 9% Mm-mm. based on what just went in my mouth. Mm-mm. That is... I mean, it's not it's not effervescent. It's not really bubbly. No. It's pretty smooth. Pretty it's flat, smooth. Very flat. Damn near syrupy. So there's, yeah. there's a lot of fruit going on in here. Mm-hmm. Wow. The sheep mullet. My breath stinks of fruit. Yeah. But it's I, I taste a lot of hop in there. The fruit's cutting it down. Man. But it's hoppy to me. Is it hoppy to you? It's not that hoppy to me. I mean, it's hoppy, but it's not It's not double IPA hoppy. That is more juicy than anything. Yes. That is like juice forward. Yeah. Leaves a weird taste on the palate. Yeah. Fruit Stripes gum. The first 10 seconds of Fruit Stripes. And metallic. Gum. Metallic aftertaste, a little bit of, them, of you know that you know what fruit stripes gum. You remember oh that yeah, shit? the zebra on it. Yeah, and it's like for the first ten seconds, you're like so much flavor, yeah. and then it's gone. <laughs> yeah, and then it just gets hard to chew. It's the fruity uh, big red. Yeah, <laughs> you're like this is so spicy. Yeah, and then nah. Do I have gum in my mouth anymore? We're gone. Yeah, yeah, I've got a puck. Mm-hmm. No, this is uh, this is wild, huh? I'd like to try it if they made it. Just instead of the DIPA, just the IPA. I I would tend to agree with you because that could be damn near a perfect because really, candy, fruity yeah. IPA. The only, my only issue is it's a little hoppy for me, which I'm not a hophead. Do you think hopheads would like this? Is it hoppy enough or is it too fruit forward? I think there will be debate amongst many, uh, you know, dorky hipster what's that app that tapped or something there's like a beer tap yeah, that, yeah uh, tapped yeah yeah that i bet that'd be an interesting read on there yeah you're gonna get a lot of this is gonna be a love or hate it with the hop mm-hmm. i am getting more of the hops now that i'm settling in i'm getting less punched in because well, the i first, went from miller light yeah to to this so it was like zero fruit to all the fruit so you definitely uh got punched in the mouth there I like that they went with a mullet. Like that's there's there's been there's a couple beers on the market right now. I'd like to know the backstory to the sheep mullet name. I wonder if a sheep mullet is a kind of mullet. That would be like what a my style. Son, that's what my son's hair would look like if he grew a mullet. Um, you looking it up? Yeah, because I assume it's not. Oh boy, it does start jumping out as the IPA. Oh no, apparently sheep get mullets. Oh really? This is dope. I can tell you right now, Untapped has this at a three six. Out of five? Yeah. They stole our scoring system. Untapped, not tapped. I knew it was I know I was in the ballpark. Huh. 
You find any definitions of sheep mullets or pictures of sheep oh, mullets? Oh, I mean, I see if I if I look up. Oh images, my gosh, those like, sheep have a mullet. Those sheep have adult mullets. There's a picture of a sheep with a mullet and uh, rigs from a uh, <laughs> lethal <Yeah>. weapon. <laughs> I mean that, and that mullet is gorgeous. Oh, There's that's a beautiful mullet. alpaca mullet. Mm. There's mullets galore. Oh man, so apparently you can shorn a sheep in a way where you just leave the the mullet, the adult mullet. Oh, come on. My man's mullet is the shit right oh here. Oh my gosh. I'm, this is beautiful. Okay. I if you go Google sheep mullet and look at the images, you're gonna see that a lot of New Zealanders have a good sense of humor and they uh they shorn their sheep in a way where they Those get crazy to crazy kiwis keep the mullet. I'm How do you feel about mullets? I mean if I was gonna fuck a sheep <laughs> I must have. Must I'd prefer have. a mullet. Give yeah. something to grab. But I mean, I do want to get rid of the rest so I can see how how thin it is. <laughs> you gotta see the curves. But like, you know, yeah. No, no. I think, like, if I'm fucking a sheep. <laughs> Let for example, just a hypothetical. Yeah, hypothetical, hypothetical here. Yeah. When yeah. I'm, I mean, uh, if if. <laughs> yes. Not when. Yes. <laughs> nah, look, hey, McGregor. Do you know the uh, you know the McGregor joke? McGregor. Yeah, this is uh, this is this is one of my favorite jokes. It's a great joke. So there's there's old man McGregor, right? Mm-hmm. And he's walking along in the hills in Scotland, and he's he's walking along with his son, and he comes up over the first hill and he looks down and he's like, "Boy, would you believe that all of that farmland you see below it was all planted by our people? We did that." Oh, but they don't call me McGregor the Great Farmer. No, no. <laughs> and then they go and they walk up the next hill and he looks down and there's this beautiful village. And he's like, all those homes were built by our people. That's all McGregor homes. Oh, but they don't <laughs> call me McGregor the Great Home Builder, do they? No. <laughs> and then they come walking up over the next hill and you look out and there's all the boats sitting in the harbor. And he's like, son. All those boats were built by McGregor's. Oh, but they don't call us McGregor, the great boat builders, do they? No, but you bugger one bloody sheep. <laughs> it's a classic. It's, it's classic. a classic. So when I see that, I always think of you know, McGregor. Yeah. The great sheep fucker. <laughs> <laughs> McGregor the Great. Yeah. It's a good one. That's a good. <laughs> that's a good name for the podcast. It's a, oh yes, <laughs> Nick Gregor, and then whatever we want to put with it. The great dot dot dot. <laughs> oh, but you bugger one bloody sheep. Gregor and the sheep mullet. <laughs> I keep laughing because I always picture him so proud. Oh yeah, every one of those boats. No, they built them. They don't call me McGregor, the great (laughs) boat builder, do they? And McGregor's the great because it it, it flows so well with great. Yeah. When you get to do your shitty Scottish accent. So uh, I digress. Are you uh, coming around with a score there? You want me to go first? I do. And I'm in between. I'm in between two numbers. I can tell you this. One of my numbers is deli worthy, and one of them is is, is borderline. So yeah. I'm, I'm wrestling between a three and a half and a four. I, I'll, I'll bury that. Or I'll put that out there now. But I would like. Aren't to both hear, those in deli contention? If yours was a four, then the three and a half would be risen up. Yeah. I just don't think that that's where this is going to go. Yeah. But I'm, I, I'm I'm in between. I love. What do we food. have? What do we have recently that everybody gave a four, a four or four and a half? We both really like something. All of us liked it. Yeah, it was across the board. Anywho, it was, um, it was uh, oops. It was somewhere around the four. It was all four or four and a half. It was all fours. It was so, all fours, and it was just last week. I'm hearkening I'm back. Fucking drawing a blank. That's hearkening back to uh, to that. You know, we all really liked it. And uh, let me see if I can get on the on the Facebook page real quick and see what it was. Um, oh, you make it. You make it too hard. You make it too hard. Where, yeah, I'm making it too hard. I, it's not coming up. Um, anyway, we did not. I don't put this on a four. If that was a four, 
I don't think that the sheep mullet is as good as whatever that was. Um, That's just heartbreaking that we're just drawing blanks like a bunch of morons. You know, this is what we do, right? Yeah, but you also know we're coming up on eight years and we've done yeah, this but it had almost the, 400 But times. it had the greatest name ever. It was, I have a small wiener. That's right. <laughs> how do we like, forget? How do we forget that? How do we forget? Oh, speaking of. Speaking of, you have a small wiener? No. Just wieners. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of where you're going with this article. Yeah. Do you hear the recent article? Yeah, we're, wieners are getting bigger. Yeah, <laughs> like 20-some percent. Like, so apparently back in like the 30s, like the, the average erect dong was a 4.6 or a 4.8. Nice. Which means... Solid. All of our grandfathers had... Itty bitty dongs, <laughs> and now they say the average the average dong is is six inches erect. How do they come up with these averages? Yeah, because like, it, wouldn't a lot of that come down to the fluffer? Exactly. Like, if I'm not really and turned the, on, and like, you gotta think across the world, like how many cultures and ethnicities, like. Yeah. Like, you can't just poll 200 Americans. Because if I've been taught anything, stereotypes say that there's widely different penis sizes yes. among stereotypes. Yes. Wildly. Yeah. And so, like, wherever the, the wherever this is conducted would have quite the bearing. And averages are weird, too, right? Like, doesn't, yeah. doesn't take... We know from rankings of podcasts and stuff like that, like, it doesn't take many low scores to really... Mess an average up. No, and God forbid you have lead in your water or something. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, you know, everyone's got little baby dongs. Or uh, you have a, you've been born with a, you know, <laughs> deficiency. Like you have some weird yeah. disease or something. But you could also think though, right? Like back in the day. Yeah. Back in the day, a lot of people did save themselves for marriage. Yeah. More often than they do now. I mean, I don't think that's up for debate. So... Back then, natural selection actually didn't take into account dong size. Because women didn't. No, because they like like the first dong they get, or like the, you know, maybe they got like two or three to sample. Speaking from. of stereotypes, is that true? I don't know. Like you always hear, like women want the biggest penis ever, and then you talk to some women, and they're like, "Nah, not really." Yeah, those little vaginaed women can get screwed. <laughs> I, I can't. Bigger's better, babies. Vaginas? <laughs> I'll take that, too. Yeah, no, I don't want some tight vagina. Gross. Gross. <laughs> Gross. I don't have time for that. <laughs> it's disgusting. No, but wouldn't you think, though, that if natural selection was coming into play, right, that if women are now more promiscuous, they have more partners yeah. going into a marriage to then procreate, they would say... Okay, I didn't really enjoy that little dong. I kind of like this bigger dong, or I like this size about here. Yeah. And then they go, I'll marry him. And then it's weird, though. Like, does dong size matter in reproduction? I mean, it doesn't matter in reproduction. Like, so natural selection, like. No, but I'm saying you choose, like, like bigger pecs. Yeah. Looking but like, like that, that makes all sense because you're like, you can defend. Yeah, but dong size, like, if you're, if, if now. If, you know, the, the sexual revolution of the 70s, like all of a sudden now it's 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 pleasurable on both sides and everybody's excited about it. And yeah. there was an awakening in the 60s that went into the 70s. And now it does matter. Like yeah. I have an opportunity. I would rather be satisfied. So maybe I would like a bigger dong. So maybe natural selection has taken over. I find it weird because we're... I don't allegedly- know that that's true. I'm just yeah. spitballing. And well, I find it weird because we're allegedly like, more obese than we ever have been and that is a visual effect like the skinnier you are the bigger you look it looks yeah it's great it's like the first thing you if you if you're not happy with your dong shed 20 pounds you might be psyched exactly yeah you know like give that a shot yeah worst case scenario you live longer yeah oops but who cares about that it's one of those weird (laughs) you know you never see you never see that commercial side effects include Longer living, gross. Yeah, but if the if the if they press the lose weight to make your dong bigger, more people would get would be down to lose weight, right? Because more men would say would say they care more about having a bigger dong than living ten extra years. Yeah, and how about trim your bush, guys? 
Yeah. Like if you've got a three inch bush and a four and <laughs> four point eight inch dong, yeah. well, you're really just showing one point eight yeah. inches. But if yeah. you've got a two centimeter bush, look who just showed all four eight. That's right. Look how good. I mean, just look, this is basic science, guys. <laughs> if I have to explain this to you. Yeah. Like, you're beyond help. Yeah. Like this, you should have figured this one out a long time ago. Trim it up. Well, I mean, we watched that fight the other night and they were, they were, all, every fight was sponsored by Manscaped. Yeah, Manscaped's out there trying to make dongs look bigger. <laughs> you know, maybe that, maybe that's it. But they, making yeah, dongs read, since big, look bigger since 2016. <laughs> that's right. But that article said though that in the 30s and 40s, the average was four eight. Now, granted, there's so much speculation in so much ways that this could have been. What if masturbation's gotten more popular thanks to all the pornography and everybody's tugging on it more? As of stretching it out, <laughs> it's plausible. Yeah. Not gonna, not gonna argue against that. I'm mm-hmm. gonna call uh, Tom Cruise and get his scientific. Uh... Well, he's a Scientologist. Yeah, so that's he what, knows he's the science. foremost. Yeah. guy. Which is when it comes to all things science. One it's step. In be- the, it's in the name. It's still one step below astrology. Yes. Well, of course. Not astronomy. There is a no. subtle difference there. One that is, fake news. Get that out is, of here. Yeah. <laughs> one is based on celestial bodies that actually exist. Yeah. And stay in the place all the time. And one of them is just like... When your parents got drunk and bumped uglies. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. You're like, oh, well, Venus wasn't retrograde. Yeah. Sure. A lot of September birthdays. Maybe uh, drunken Christmas and or uh, New Year's uh, had something to do with that? No. It was meant to be. My, um, my wife had never like like talked about astrology like ever. Uh-huh. And here in the last like three months, all of a sudden she's like, "Well, that's just because they're not compatible because of it." And I was like, "Oh God, that makes like, me want to oh. punch myself in the face." Yeah, I was like, "Yo, yo, yo, back that up." So, do you ever date one of those chicks? Not long. I dated one, and it was awful because it was like from the jump, it was like, "We're not going to work out." Yeah, I'm like, no. what are we doing here? I had to like, I had to like walk through. I was like, "Okay, let's read some stuff." Like, let's really get into it. And I want you to think about... Oh, don't bring your silly facts into this argument, Brendan. It uh, didn't go as well as I would have liked. <laughs> but, like, even my kids, like, they were like, no, no, this is facts. Like, at the start, it was like three of them against me. She had your kids biting them. No, they were the ones who brought it up. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, she's like, she's like, yeah, like, yeah. of course, this is real. And then, like, I'm like, I don't know this side of you. And I don't <laughs> want to know yeah, this side yeah, of you. Yeah. Like, there is science. Yeah. And then there's bullshit. Yeah. You know, like I was born in the year of the dragon, but I don't necessarily have all these traits exactly. either. Like, so we kind of went through it, and I, I was just like, all right. So I was like, they all say them. some innocuous, like great things, and then one it's, like kind of half-hearted, like, and you're kind of stubborn too, and it's like, you get me, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all some bullshit, full of love, yeah. But it can be misunderstood by these cunts. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Like, what? Yeah. So now, like, like I'm not by it, it's it, it was heartbreaking, but I had to like walk them through all of their things. And then, of course, the my, my one daughter was like, well, I'm on the cusp. And I'm like, oh, the, oh the no, most, you're really getting into the it. most difficult argument mm-hmm. to argue against because now they can pick and choose. Yeah. And I was like, fine. How about I just read everybody's horoscopes from today? Yeah. It's factual. We and know what happened today. And then my wife started pulling out like, oh, yeah, but the retrograde stuff. Oh, and I'm like, you didn't, you didn't put that and in. I'm like, the- oh, well, I didn't carry the two. <laughs> so of course I, I, I didn't know that, that it's, it's off for 80% of the population yeah, 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 today yeah. because, because Mercury. Yeah. Like this eventually you don't get it at the end. I at least chipped away enough that everybody was like, I mean, it's not exact. Oh, okay. Like, Good. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. And I'll go. That's home. a win. No, that's a win. You had three women, to somewhat change their thought process on something. So yeah. that's a W in your column, dude. I look okay. And the worst part is though, I'm over here wearing like a Malachite bracelet because this is actually really good for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is really does. Nice. So like, I, I have like this certain amount of hippie that like, yeah. I do, but well, you're into. superstitious and yeah, but it's not, it's also just like, I liked the way it looked. And then I backed into it. I was like, Oh, turns out this is really good for like my blood pressure. But like, you're aware of your that the stuff is like like okay so i don't know if we talked about this but 
you don't split posts. Like you're really hardcore about splitting posts. Do not split a post. So when I walk with you, I never think about that. And I end up like, but you'll see me go back and go around. But you post. go around. I'm like, crap. I got to remember Brendan and like split posts, which I means don't. for those that don't know, if we walk between an upright, a ballard, a, a post for a, for street a deck light, above a street light. Yeah. We got to both walk on the same side. And, and that, you know where that comes from? My football team, I had one stupid-ass coach when I was a little kid, and he was like, hey, we're a team. We don't split the pole. And that was that was it. So Meaning like when, the upright? Yeah, like the, the field goal. Yeah. So, like, we would come out, and the whole team would have to go around, ah, and it was to show, like, we were unity. one unit. Yeah. So we would come around the pole that but way. But you still adhere to that, but you know that's just a silly thing you do. Like, you don't... Sure. You, you're not scientifically trying to prove or disprove. No. You're just like, this is my thing. But I will... Turn you will around, backtrack. Yeah. Walk back and go around that pole because that's my team and I don't break with my yeah. team. And it has turned into a superstition to the point where I'm like, because now it, it, it festers in my head where I'm like, it's bad luck if I do it. Yeah. Originally it was a unity thing. Yeah. And then that cancer grew. Yeah. Now to me, time, it's a bad luck. Last luck. time we ran up the road to Lucky, like I split like a ballard and like a, a roof, a roof four by four. <laughs> like, and you were like zigzagging left and right through yeah. there. <laughs> and my kids, my kids will literally, will be walking as a group and one of them will split off. Yeah. And then. Oh, what do you do? So I've had to come up with a new theory. Go Who, the majority? No, whoever was in front. Is the leader? Was the leader. Okay. And they chose the side of the pole that our team's supposed to go on. And I will follow the front person. So then the one. Which is all just bullshit. The, it's all made the, up. <laughs> the one anomaly is out on their own. Fuck them. You're not part of the team. Yeah. No. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Okay. And now, and now when I was like, oh, well, of course you got food poisoning because. Not because you ordered yeah, the shrimp, because yeah, yeah. you split the pole. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But again, you don't. It's, a, it's you're not trying to sell it, and you're not trying, and you understand. No, it's, it's my problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. my demon. Yeah. But yeah, no. So I don't push it on people. But yeah. I'm also like, if you could not split the pole, that yeah. would be helpful, would be helpful for me. Because if I'm behind you, I'm gonna follow you whichever way you go. Because I could see your kids, like, and by your kids, I mean everyone that has kids. Like, if you if this is your thing, like, they're gonna walk circles around it, and you're gonna be like. Oh, okay. If I'm if I'm in front and I walk, one of them will inevitably be like <laughs> and split that bit. <laughs> but I, I've had to like come up with my own bullshit. Mm -hmm. Well, I was the leader, and the you majority didn't split came that with pole. Us. I didn't split the pole. You yeah. split the pole. That's your problem. Yeah. And then in my mind, I'm like, I have to watch them now. Like, make sure they don't dart out in front of a car because yeah. I feel like they're going to go insane. Instant death. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Neither here nor there. Are we having a beer? I was gonna say, do we want to get back to uh, judging this beer? Yeah, you you go go. Okay, so my so we talked about it a lot, so I'm not gonna get back into it. But it's the sheep mullet, double IPA, nine percent. It's not boozy. Plus, very fruity. Plus, uh, I like my beer a little more effervescent. Eh, uh, it's a little hoppy, hence the double IPA. Uh, but. All in all, it's a good beer, and I'll give it a three and a half. I can't go higher just because it's not it's not next level. It's just it's good, but it's above average, but it's not next level for my palate. Did I split the pole there? Yeah. <laughs> you did, because you went three and a half, which means I can give it a deli or I cannot. Yeah. <sighs> One more. But I had that number in my head before you even started talking about it, because I didn't think you'd go that high, because it is it is hoppy and it yeah. is, it's, it's, it's but it's tasty. It's really tasty. Again, I like my beer a little more. This is when I wish I had carbonated. A I wish we had a third yeah, beer. yeah. Because in my mind, I love all the fruit forward. Yeah, I don't mind that it's not super effervescent. I love how juicy it is. To me, that's a four, but I am an anomaly because I like a hoppy beer. A third person here would probably ding this to a three, and this would net out exactly where it should be. Because this yeah. beer, in an everyone likes it scenario. So I'm going to put an asterisk on this. Oh. Because in an everyone likes it scenario, this is not a deli. It's just not. Okay. But with two people, unfortunately, I love it. Because of how fruity it is and how much fun it is, that I'm going to give it the four, which puts it at a three seven five, which gives it a deli, and that's but how, with an asterisk. It is an asterisk because I know for a fact if Stu was sitting here or Ely was sitting here or the Abacus was sitting here, 
They would shoot it down. They would. Someone would shoot it down because this is two not, or three. This is not an agreeable beer across the board. It's just not. No. It's too hoppy for people who don't like hops. Yeah. It's too fruit forward for people who don't like fruit. Yeah. I just happy to like juicy, fruity, hoppy beers. Yeah. So to me, that's a four. So that's a deli. I'm not mad at it. Thank hey, you. Thank you, Woody, to the listener. Woody, good job, buddy. Thanks, Woody. Appreciate you. Ring that bell. Woody liked it. Woody probably hated it, and he was just sending it to me. He's like, "Oh, uh, you no think he did us like that? that?" He was like, "It was gross," and I'm like, "I really like it." But I, I do, also I, like fruit stripes gum. Yeah, I like when people bring us good beers, thinking they have good beers. I, I do kind of like when you know, because we're dudes and we like to like do stupid things. When they're like, "You're gonna hate this." Here, you drink it. <laughs> you know That's what I just realized, fun. dude? What? We're an hour and five minutes in, and we've only taken one topic off the board. What the hell did we talk about for an hour? I do not know. Well, I, I had got- someone ask me, I had a good friend ask me earlier in the week. He was like trying to get into the podcast. And I was like, well, you know, I do one. I mean, you were in my wedding. You think you would have listened. And he's like, Can you get, get, he's like, get, he's like, I need to listen. I apologize. Give me a good episode. I'm like, dude, you are asking the wrong person. You know what I told someone the other day because I, they asked about that. It was actually Eddie V. It was like, hey, I want to go back because he's like, I only know recent. Yeah. He's like, I want to go back. And I sent him back to a trucker, a mustache, and something walk into a hotel. How do you go back for those that want to? Can you scroll down Apple that far? Because, I mean, like I said, we're coming to eight years, almost 400 episodes. You can't scroll back eight years? Yeah. You got to go to our website you go if, to you go, if you want to go full eight years. Just go to insidethepowerhouse.com. You can go all the way back eight okay. years. Okay, cool. But a trucker and a mustache walk into a hotel, that's the one where... I couldn't tell you what any... That means nothing to me. It's the one where I went to driving school. Okay. And I just... That dude with his pants pants around his ankles, Uh the pee in... I I just... I laugh. And I'm like, I just think that's a good good episode. There we go. Now, that's one that I talk a lot. Yeah. You want a Troy talking a lot? Then I would say Williamsburg Bear. Well, obviously, that's like a famous one. You want to um, go all the way back to one that went off the rails fast is the Big Rich episode. Oh, yeah. Big Rich was, was the called, best. I think that's called That Got Out of Hand Fast or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that one that one is, is hilarious, too. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of, like, good episodes in the past. Oh, yeah. But it, you could, there's, a, there's, a, there's a million good episodes. And they're all on the website. Yeah, they're nice. all there. But otherwise, it only goes back, like, 200 episodes in iTunes. Yeah. Because they just... They dump the 200. Yeah. They don't do 201. 201 is gone. Yeah. So it lives in the archives on our site. But So you only have, you can only go back half of our. <laughs> not even half. Yeah, not even. Well, we're four, we're close to 400, I think. No, it's 52 weeks a year. This is our eighth year. Yeah. That's 400. Well, Eight yeah. times five. If you're going to do the fucking math. <laughs> I just, get, I rounded to 50 a yeah. year, but. So, no, you're right. I mean, yeah, so there's about half of the episodes, which arguably the sweet spot was right in the middle. Yeah. So half of them are gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a tough little. We're not getting better. Nah, well, we have less <laughs> We have less support. Yeah. We have less support. I do want to uh, I do want to talk about a topic that was sent in by a listener, though. We love that. Yeah. Keep sending topics in. And this topic came over. I know nothing about this topic. You mentioned it, and I know I've never even heard of this place. Which blows my mind. I'm not a Nova guy. (coughs) Bless you. Bless you. Woo. Actually, I'm going to make you pad for just a moment. Oh, okay. Because this story is going to take me, I I think this is a 10-minute one, and I got got a three minutes before I pee on myself. Oh, my gosh. So I got a pad. Give me something to talk about. Um, McGregor the Great Boat Builder. No, but you blog a one buddy sheep. Yeah, That's, I mean, could do that. You could. <laughs> or I right. talk about McGregor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> McGregor. You could talk about how damn good those UFC fights were this past week. Even though a lot of people complained that the UFC fights were not that good, but I thought, I thought it was good. But I think it comes down to how we how we watch UFC. Here. Yeah, I think that's how you do it. Yeah, you got to pair up with somebody. Who's got equal gambling yeah. taste? Yeah. So Brendan, on a whim, hit us up, a group of guys out of nowhere, and was like, "Hey guys, UFC fights tonight. 
just so happened I found out last second not going to have the wife and kids around. So he hit us up and three or four of us, uh, three of us got up and we're like, Hey, I don't have much going on tonight. So we'll, we'll catch up. And of course it turned into a uh, gambling debacle. So we each paired off and we're betting a couple bucks here and there on the uh, fights, which always makes it a little more interesting. Even me, the non gambler of the group, I was throwing in, you know, big money, $2 a, a fight. And, uh, we had some winners and we had some losers and, uh, there were some good fights, even though I haven't been following the UFC a lot lately and the headliners I knew nothing about, but there were some definitely some good fights. But I think that's the that's the key is that the fights the fights don't matter so Fight, much as fighting is still fighting. Money. Fighting's fighting. Yeah. Blood is blood. And it's still impressive to me. I guess my my caveman brain, you know, like we're first world now, so like we don't have to fight. But gladiators came from the first world of that time. Yeah. And there's been fighting since the dawn of time. I'm always impressed with anyone who wants to get in a cage and get punched in the face. It's just, it's, it's just ultimate impressive, just willpower. Because again, you don't. A lot of these guys, you don't have to do it. They love to do it. They want to do it. Even the guys that like win usually, all the fighters we saw took damage. Like, so you know you're getting hurt going in, but shit, you're going to do it anyway. But I think the beauty of how we do it is you pair off with someone who has equal amounts of, like, I'm willing to bet X. Gambling degeneracy? Yeah. Like, yeah. there's some of us that are like, if $10 it's not, a fight. If it's not double digits, I'm not interested. Yeah, there's yeah. people like, I'm single digits. You pair off with someone, and you make it real easy. You go, all right, who do you like in this first fight? You wait till the tail of the tape comes up. Yep. You pick your No fighter. odds. No odds. Fuck it. You pick your fighter and whoever loses gets to pick the, the next, next fight. fight. Yeah. And if it works out when you get to the end main event that you're the one who gets to pick, then you've got a real advantage yeah. here because you probably do have someone you care about in the main event. So you can go double or nothing, bitch. Yeah. Like let's, let's dance. But if you do that, it allows you to watch prelims all the way through mm -hmm. the pay-per-view you're going to get a dozen fights. Well, and rarely do you, like, take a dozen L's. There's there's some back and forth. It always goes back yeah. and forth. In fact, though, I had only lost one that whole day until the final fight because I had, I had been kicking ass. Yeah. So, like, the other guy got to take the other side. Yeah. Win his money back. I ended up netting out, like, $2. Yeah. But throughout the night, I probably bet $50, $60, but I netted out at 2 I think I, yeah, I think I bet on four or five fights, and I think the way it worked was I won one, he won two, I won one, and then like I won the last one or whatever. I think I ended up with five bucks. You just like, need an even number of guys in a room. Yeah, because it gets confusing when there's Oh, we were trying numbers. before you got here. We were yeah. like, man, this is brutal. We are writing it all down. But that's the thing. You, you get a UFC fight with one buddy. Yeah. You can have a great night just by doing this, where loser gets the fair ups, he gets to pick the next fight. You don't have to know anything about yep. it, and it's going to make it so much fun because you've never rooted for that little. You're going to root for a little Brazilian dude as hard as you would for McGregor, the great fighter. <laughs> well, dude, we I mentioned before the podcast we need to tease next episode, and we haven't done it yet, and we're an hour and 12 minutes. All right, but I do want to talk about this Yeah, but let's topic. tease first. But so, the tease here is that we did it. We finally got our hands on the new fat tire. We got the old fat tire, and so I was really excited tonight. I walked into Total Wine, and I walked through Because I went in last week. I think I told the story, yeah, right? They, they didn't, didn't have, have it. Yeah. They didn't have the new one. I walked into Total Wine, and they had one six-pack of old-school fat tire. OG. And I looked at it, and I was like... Damn it, they still don't have it. I was like, well, let me check. And I pulled it out, and behind it really was the stack of the new ones. Nice. So I literally have the freshest possible old fat tire to go up against the freshest, the freshest possible new fat tire. Can I say anything about it as it sits across the bar? Or should I hold off on my opinion? I think we should hold off. Okay. Because I have opinions. Well, the logos the logos alone have opinions. I mean, I don't like... Well, there's a lot to say. I don't want... We're going to have a... This, we're going to talk about this for a while uh, on the next episode. You're going you're gonna to want to listen in. You're going to want to hear it. Are you fucking kidding me? What? 
It's not even a beach cruiser on the new fat tire label. Is it not? What is it? It's a street bike. Oh, it's a fixie? Dude. All right. I don't even want to I don't even want to do that. I I'm I'm already mad. I don't even want to do this. We need to do a blind taste test. I want these bitches on ice. We will talk about this in the next podcast. The these- color this this the label, everything looks awful. It's a downgrade all the way across the board. I'm I'm upset. But now we gotta try them. I'm scared to do a blind taste test because I don't want to like the new one. I want to like the new one. You do? Yeah. I want to find out that I'm hip. You you're not. We don't know that. But do we? We're gonna find out. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of hip. All right. The hippest Last place topic. on earth. Hippest place on earth. Dan's Cafe, Adams Morgan, Washington, D.C. Why is this the hippest place? It sounds like a nothing. Perfect. So you get it. <laughs> I don't even have to explain it. Dan's Cafe. So Adams Morgan in general. And this came in. This came it's in. It's a from debaucherous part of. Uh, very much so. D.C., right? Beautiful. So this, this topic came in from Sean. Shout out to Sean. Thank you so much for sending this. Literally, the email was like, you're welcome. And then the link. oh Sean, when he opened this up across from me and started reading it, he was laughing and super excited. So you hit the nail on the head here. Oh, there's no doubt. And I, I mean, I'm 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 over the moon because Dan's Cafe is. It was literally like my my spot. I mean, I spent. Oh, now I have to open it in the app. What the hell is this? I had the article up earlier. And now it's not letting me read the article. I'm going to open it again. Because you got to read something from it, right? <laughs> well, I just think it's funny. So Dan's Cafe, when I when I had originally graduated college, Dan's Cafe is, is a little shithole dive bar in Adams Morgan. Now, Adams Morgan, a little part of D.C. that's about a, a, a five-block stretch that all the bars there, like the clubs are the best as far as I'm concerned. The food is 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 good in its own way, you know. They have the giant slice of pizza. They have a couple of those places. They got a lot of good Ethiopian food, so it is like traditionally like Ethiopian kind of area. Interesting. But the bars are. It gets wild at night, right? Insane. It gets it it gets gets very wild. You have your parts of D.C. that are more upper crust, and then you got Adams Morgan, which is debauchery. That's where like college kids, right? Like it's not like forty Absolutely. somethings go there. It's like oh, you still go there. Like I actually was in there uh, not long ago, and I went to. But Ma- were you the weird old guy there? No. Oh really? No. I went to Madams Organ, which has been there as a staple. Yeah. So Adams Morgan, Madams Organ. Oh, I get it. You get it. And this place is 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 a classic. And I was actually down there with a coworker, and he was like. He was like, yeah, so I went to Catholic University, and we always would go to Madam's Organ. I was like, we should go back to Madam's Organ. Like, we sat up there, just pounded beers, but we sat in the upstairs while the debauchery went on downstairs, yeah. and we just kind of sat up there and drank beers, and it was it's a blast. But the worst of the worst is Dan's Cafe. You mean best of the best? Depending on how you look at it. <laughs> Dan's Cafe. Is it Cafe. a hole in the wall? Is it small? Shit hole in the wall. Okay. You walk in. Like you'd walk by it, maybe. Yeah, it literally just says Dan's outside. <laughs> and like it looks so it's at the very tip of Adams Morgan. So like when you come in, you come from the city and then like there's this street that has clubs and restaurants and and life. And right at the tip there's Dan's Cafe, just the tip. And when you walk in, you walk into Dan's Cafe, directly to your left is a pool table. No one's ever played pool on. It's covered in spills and yeah. drinks and just nonsense. Filth. And then it goes straight back like one of the like your like typical a, like a straight, fan shotgun bar. Yeah, it's like your typical straight rectangle. Yeah, goes right back. And there's a bar along there, and then all the way at the back is a bathroom, and everyone just crowds in. And the reason they crowd in, yeah, what's Dan's known for? The cheapest way to get drunk in the world. If you're homeless, you go to Dan's. If you're a college kid, you go to dance. If you're just out of college, you go to dance. So there's some like two dollar shots and like. When I would go, they would give you a fifth of liquor. And Is a, that legal? And a can of soda. They would open it. Not a fifth, like a like a pint. A three seven five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The smallest. Uh, yeah, the little, but not a mini bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You know, it's a three seven five. It's yeah, a bottle. I don't think it's, that's a fifth. It's a no. A fifth is a, like a seven fifty or something. It's it's enough. I know it's what you're talking about. Enough. You know, it's probably seven shots. Yeah. It's, just say that it's seven yeah, shots. Yeah. They hand you a bottle, and so you would order like this. I will take the aristocrat gin and a, bo- a can of ginger ale. So one can of soda. One can of soda and a fucking bottle. How expensive is it? Or was it, I guess? Dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. This was sub $10. Wow. And you're handed that. And you can get drunk. That'll get you drunk. Yeah, so the trick was, you go in there and you order one of those, sub $10, boom, take it. And then before you leave, you go, let me get one more. And then you just put a top on it. You put they it wouldn't in- take the top from you? They would take the top from you, just bring a top. Gotcha. Because it's all the same size top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any fucking top will do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you pick up a Coke on the way, you know, and yeah. then you just put a top on. You put it in your pocket because you go to the clubs. Oh, great. It's flat. The bottles are flask size. Yeah. So you put yeah. it in your pocket and you go to the club. And then when you get into the club, you're just you don't have to spend any money because yeah. you're just pulling off that. So for $20, you have a whole night out. A whole drunken night. In Adams Morgan. Yeah. So Dan's Cafe is the scourge of the earth. Now they put them into like little squeeze bottles. Because they weren't allowed to sell those. Because what was happening is all the clubs were finding people. They they would they would wake up the next day. Yeah. And the dance floors littered with bottles. Yeah. And they're like, we're not selling any liquor because everybody knows you just go to dance cafe, and you buy your liquor. Yeah. And then you go down here and you walk in, <clears throat> and it's really not that much more than going to the ABC store because dance does not give a shit. Now dance has been unapologetically shitty to this neighborhood all along. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we mopped the floor in 82. It yeah. should be fine. Yeah, no one no one in the neighborhood appreciates this place. Yeah, the pool table's been beat up. The place is shithole. People in there are the worst of the worst. That's just what they are. Now, they have embraced it because every year you get new clientele, the 21-year-olds who are like, I just want to get drunk before I go out in Adams Morgan and party. We're going to Dance Cafe. Like I said, they did move it to like, Ketchup bottles, like little squeeze bottles that they'll fill up and then they'll give you like, but it's still the same concept. Yeah. But they didn't like seeing the littered liquor bottles. So they started giving you little squeeze bottles that made it more difficult to bring in other bars. Just their little, little bit they could do for the yeah. neighborhood to help out. It doesn't help. This no. is where you go to get drunk. Yeah. And it's dirt cheap. And because you're so hand bone, you're making poor choices. Like you're not throwing it in the bin. You're literally dumping it on the floor. Like, of course. Yeah. It's a, I've taken my wife there many times. I'd met many wives before that there. <laughs> That's just the kind of place it is. You yeah. know what I mean? Bad decisions are made. Bad decisions are made there. Well, this past Valentine's Day, so just the other day, somebody went in there and decided this was the place to propose to his wife. I can't believe this is the first time. This sounds like a place where many a drunken co-ed has met her future husband and bad decisions have been made. Dude, some of my first dates with my current wife. Yeah. Not my future wife. <laughs> my current wife. God, she's going to be great though, right? Not after I take her to Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I will corrupt her. Yeah. So like we would go in there because that was how we would do it. Be like, Hey, night out. We're going to go downtown. And you don't even have to be a college kid to everybody lived that early 20. Well, I say everybody. We have some friends that came right out of college making six figures, but most of us lived a life where, like, you were living paycheck to paycheck and you wanted to go have fun, catch a little buzz. No, and so this has been this has been what Dan Dan's Cafe has been open in Adams Morgan since 1965. Wow! During COVID, they were unapologetically like open. Fuck this! They stayed open. And every drunk spilled in there and yeah. said, fuck it. They don't feel pandemics. Yeah. They don't feel recessions. Well, they have a They're literally a try, they have a tried and true business model. Since 65. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna get you so drunk. Are we gonna fix the toilet? No. Because that costs money. We don't have the money. Yeah. We're getting you drunk and we're sending you out, and that's what we do. It is the worst dive bar. I didn't think you could sell liquor in Virginia. Like, I'm pretty sure there's like it's a ABC. DC. 
Oh, it's DC, man. Because in Virginia, like there's silly rules, like you can't make drinks with over X amount of out- ounces of liquor. So like you, you got to sell food. You yeah, gotta do- yeah, yeah, no, yeah. there is none of that. That's right. That's this right. is DC, and this place. DC is so weird. Even you know, growing up here in Central Virginia and being around DC my whole life, it's still so weird that DC is its own little mini, whatever it no is. No taxation, no representation. Yeah. We are doing our own thing. This is the spot. Yeah. This is the most debaucherous place. But and you have two places next to it that have all these silly rules. Or sure. Re- Virginia more than Maryland. Maryland, they sell liquor everywhere. Yeah, it's privatized, but it's yeah. still... Look, Dan's stands alone, though. Yeah. This is my favorite. But the floor is so sticky. Oh, God. I can only... Ma- what, what must that place look like in the daylight hours? Heaven. A fucking Petri dish. It's... I love it. You don't want to be there during daylight hours, dude. You've made really bad choices. I've I've made a lot of good and bad choices coming out of there. I got interviewed for a Wild on DC, that old Brooke Burke show. That yeah, was on I, I remember that story. Is that where it was? I came out of Dan's Cafe, and then I had gone down the street with a bottle of liquor in my pocket, standard <laughs> procedure, went to another place, partied it up in the Heaven and Hell Club, partied it up, drank it all down. Threw the bottle on the ground, staggered out, went to the pizza shop to get the giant jumbo slice of pizza, walked out. Must have. And then got hit by the cameras. There's no better food than drunk and eating. Like giant slice of pizza? I mean, no, I'm not saying pizzas. I'm just saying when you're hand-boned, when you tore up, any food is delicious. So apparently, and, and this place is the worst. Well, apparently somebody decided to propose to his wife there because it was her, his, his girlfriend's birthday party. And these girls were getting after it. Yeah. So she decided, girls, let's go to dance. Let's drink a lot. Then we'll go out partying, which is actually a very logical move Mm because everybody does it. This guy's thinking, oh, shit, she's going to dance. I better put a ring on it. (laughs) Because she's going to go out. She's going to make some poor choices. She's going to bang someone in the bathroom. Yeah. So she goes, they go there on Valentine's Day, and then he shows up. And he proposes to her and he drops to his knee in Dan's cafe, which never happens. And like I'm telling you, this place is unapologetic at best. They know what they are. And I'll be damned. Like some of the tweets that started coming back when this came out, because this guy's like, I got proposed. I, I proposed the night. She said yes at Dan's cafe. Well, that shit went viral in DC. How narcissistic are we that we think other people care that we got engaged? Like, shut up. So some of the comments that came back, I love, like just on the on the tweet. Yeah. Because once it started going viral, it ain't just his friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, talk about finding a hopeless place. Talk about finding love in a hopeless place. Like, <laughs> I hope they offered the happy couple a champagne bottle, a champagne and a ketchup squeeze bottle. I just hope that he didn't get puke on his knee when he popped the question. <laughs> if you drop the ring, it would stick on the floor forever. Like some of these just... Just cracked me up. They're obviously, they've obviously been. So Dan's Cafe responded to this with their own tweet. Uh Uh-oh. That reads, an alleged recent incident involving an engagement in our establishment and vows to make, and we vow to make sure it'll never happen again, as we are a safe haven for singles, bad decisions, one night stands, and the like. (laughs) <laughs> yes the fact that the proposal occurred around valentine valentine's day is all the more sickening <laughs> <laughs> this was their this was their response and then eater this website reached out to dance cafe to embellish on how the engagement went down and the bar simply responded with fuck the happy couple <laughs> <laughs> i love dance cafe oh, i've never been but it's my new favorite job like, like they get it. That's they know exactly what they are. Yep. They Who they been, are. They have been the scourge of DC for so long. Yep. Since sixty five. Yeah. No. They you don't know, want any you, part of this. You know They're what like, I love you it made so a much? bad decision. You know I love it so much? Every other dumbass bar would have taken a photo, put it up, no. like been like they Love, condemned it. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're like, this makes me want to puke on <laughs> our floor because that's <laughs> yeah, what we do here. That's right. They I were love furious. it. I love it. So the fact that Love even tried to blossom, they're like, this isn't for marriage. This is for one night stands and bullshit. I love Dance Cafe. What's the over under on that relationship? Two and a half years? 
that funny, marriage? Funny you said two and a half. I was going to think that, you know, the kind of people who go to Dance Cafe, they are, they're, they're a good degenerate bunch. Yeah. So it's not going to be an annulment. Yeah. This is going to stretch out a little longer than it, a little longer than that. Oh, they're going to fight it out for a while. They're going to fight it out. Yeah. Fight it out. So two and a half is a fair over-under. Yeah, that's a good over-under. I know where I'm taking. You're taking the under, and I will. <laughs> I will take the over. I will take the over because I'll be damned. They have three years in them. <laughs> they do. They and do. You're, you're a lover. You believe in love. I do believe in love. And I believe they can but fight for three. But not dance. Well, I believe in dance. No, but you don't believe in love in dance. Those two words don't go together. Oh, no, I love dance. <laughs> <laughs> but even dance would say, don't even put that together. Yeah, they're like, they're like you should like us. Yeah. But you should never love never us. Never love us. And they don't want you to love them. No. It's, I'm telling you, man, it is. That's awesome. The finest establishment in the world. It makes every. I wish I'd gone there in college. That sounds like a fun place to be. I'll, I'll, I will take you there. Well, I won't get to enjoy it. You can drive me home. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Actually, that probably would be a I good think place to be a ha- just a fly on the wall. I think you should see it. Yeah. I really do. It is It is really something to behold. It's. It sounds like it. Yeah. It's. It's. It, it was, for, for about a five-year period in my life, it was my happy place. I mean, it was literally. Like, did you go weekly? Like, it was a. Weekly. Or did you start every night out there? Like, every night. Yeah. I Adams Morgan was my chosen spot. Could in you walk there? Like how like how did it work? Did you live that close or no, no, we drove. <laughs> <laughs> I Not didn't home drive. though. No, I didn't drive. Yeah. No, no, no. We had we had a couple buddies that were like a little more put together. Yeah. They would like they were the type, you know, they're like smoking pot outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but like they wanted to go where the action was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you would meet people in dance and then you'd follow them through the night and then they would have that. Because you could bar hop around there. Yeah, they'd have that stink on them. So like you'd be in the club and be like, "Mm, those people were in dance. So they're down. You smell like bad decisions and vomit. Yeah. So like my buddies that were like smoking and driving, they were like, hey, man, this is great. Like I'll go to dance. I'll scope out who the scene is. Yeah. Then we'll go out to the clubs and then that's who I talk to. There you go. So they were great. And I was like. I don't even remember that person. <laughs> I was just here for fun. I love it. I love it. But you'd find yourself in, in literally every kind of place. I found myself in go-go bars where I was like the only white guy in the place. And then I found myself in, in, in places that were like high end and everybody's in suits and I'm like sipping out of a flask. But it all started at dance. But it always starts at dance. And it was like everything in between, you know, it was... Adams Morgan was the the perfect melting pot for me to be able to enjoy everything that DC had to offer and a tremendous amount of booze at a low price. I remember being broke and going out back in the day and we would, uh, during the winter months, you'd have your, you know, your big winter coat on and we, you know, you buy Miller Lite or Coors Light in a bottle, you pretty much know the bar is going to have it. So you just made sure you knew what they had, and we just roll up with two or three beers on us. <laughs> I had a North Face jacket in extra large that had enough pockets that you could literally smuggle a case of beer in various pockets. Yeah. Now, you'd look pretty puffy coming in. Yeah. But, like, that was how we always got the beer in the dorms, because my buddy had this jacket, and he was like, I remember he showed up to a party, and he was like, I have a case of beer. And I was like, <laughs> are you serious? And he's, like, showing me all the pockets. I was like, okay. So before I went to college, that was it because you yeah. weren't allowed to bring beer in. So I, I could put a case of beer in this jacket nice. and walk in the dorm. Well, that became, I still have that jacket nice. to this day because I well, know. You can't let a gym like that go. No. The liner fell out, but yeah. it's like from the outside. Still looks good. Ah, oh, she's a peach. <laughs> hey, dude, we're in an hour 33. We're good. I, I do want to, I do want to tease one more time next week. Yes, Next week. I'm excited. The official breakdown of Fat Tire. New Fat Tire. New Fat Tire, old Fat Tire. Head to head. Head to head. Blind taste test. I want to know what's up. I cannot believe they changed the recipe on what is, I think, the most iconic beer in the craft beer industry. You can argue Sam Adams, but outside of that, like. Uh, okay, no. You, here you go. You got Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Yeah. Fat Tire. Maybe Anchor Steam. Maybe. 
Angerstein never got on the level. But the I'll other give guys it. I'll did. give it Sam Adams because they 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 stake the claim to being the first. But those that's that's their top three then. But they bastardized themselves. Like they made like thirty six varieties. Like they kind of went. A little, but so is everybody. But not New Belgium. Well, New Belgium has a lot of different stuff out there. They put it on the Voodoo Ranger label, yeah. and all these other things. But this is this is the flagship. This is like if Sam Adams changed Boston Sam Adams. Lager, and if Sierra Nevada said. No, our pale ale is is less pale. Yeah, we're or and or we're changing that iconic green yellow mountains. Like we're getting rid of that. This is crazy. Yeah, to me. if Sam Adams got rid of the Sam Adams on the, holding the beer mug on the front. Yeah, they just changed their name to Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Yeah. This is gonna be a big showdown next week. Well, I hate it already. Just looking at it makes me want to puke. We're gonna have a special guest. Yeah, Stu. Yeah, I know the listeners are excited. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe somebody else. Who knows? I don't we, know. We got days to figure it out. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Me too. Woody, thanks for sending us this beer. For real. It You're a real up, one. It ended up pulling a deli. That's we right. certainly appreciate it. If you haven't had a chance to uh, get a mortgage, you can always do so over at Screen Door Mortgage. Ask for Jimmy. He'll take care of you. If you haven't had a chance to send us money on your uh, on Venmo, you can always do so. At Inside the Pallet House on Venmo. If you haven't, and I'm... This one is very serious. All those were serious, but this is also very serious. If you haven't had a chance to grab your buddy's phone and sign them up for Inside the Pallet House, yep. spread the word, man. Subscribe them to the show. This will help us more than reviews, but I'm not trying to take away the importance of reviews. Yeah. Whatever platform you're listening on, give us a review. Yep. Five star would be helpful. And write a review because that really helps. No, writing the review goes a long way. Yeah. The, they don't, the they five don't just stars, want stars are, are kind of don't really help. The writing of the reviews really helps. Yeah, because you can help try to describe whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> And you could help us finally answer that question. <laughs> yeah. And if you have topics you want to send you, you always do so at inside the pallet house at gmail.com. Sean, thank you for sending in the dance cafe topic. That took for me real. down a little uh, memory lane there. Yeah. I certainly appreciate. And if you head over to Nectar Sunglasses, you can get a pair of sunglasses by dropping the Abacus coupon code in there. That's you right. get 20% off. Of all purchases, not just sunglasses. You can get some gear, some swag. I like the hats. All the stuff, yeah. Oh, like yeah. The hats. The shirts are all, I mean, it, look, it's a it's a cool brand. It's a lifestyle brand. Yeah. I'm just going to let it go with that. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, all that shit. Yeah, you know. Yeah, thank you, know you guys so much for tuning in. We'll be talking to you next week. Cheers. Cheers. That was a pretty good podcast, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs>